How do our bodies react to extreme heat? It's a question that has puzzled scientists for a long time. But now, thanks to a groundbreaking study by Lewis Halsey, a professor of health sciences at the University of Roehampton, we're getting closer to the answers. Halsey's study, recently presented at a conference of the Society for Experimental Biology, revealed that the critical temperature for humans falls between 104 and 122 degrees Fahrenheit, 40 and 50 degrees Celsius. To arrive at this conclusion, Halsey and his team compared the resting metabolic rate of 13 participants at room temperature and at a scorching 122 degrees Fahrenheit with 25% humidity. They also measured skin and rectal temperature, as well as heart rate, to understand how different individuals' metabolism responds to varying temperatures. While Halsey discussed his findings in a comfortable 73.5 degree spring weather, the interviewer, unfortunately, endured a suffocating 97 degrees in Madrid, Spain. Halsey pointed out that the heat in Madrid is dry, and if one were to be outside, naked, and at rest, it would actually fall within the thermoneutral zone. Of course, he added with a chuckle, going naked in public might lead to some legal trouble. The thermoneutral zone, according to Halsey, refers to the temperature range where our metabolic rate is at resting levels. It's like an idling engine, ready to go but not expending too much energy. This zone typically lies between 82.5 and 90 odd degrees, assuming the person is naked or semi-naked, Clothing can create a microclimate that disrupts this balance, making it challenging to set a concrete upper limit for the thermoneutral zone. Halsey found significant differences in how men and women respond to heat. Cardiac function, in particular, showed remarkable variations between the sexes. However, the thermoneutral zone doesn't perfectly correlate with the feeling of comfort or the temperatures that pose health risks like heat stroke or dehydration. The World Health Organization suggests that the optimal room temperature for the body is between 64.4 and 75.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Temperatures exceeding 95 degrees, coupled with high humidity, can endanger our health, and even temperatures as low as 104 degrees can be dangerous with low humidity. When our bodies are subjected to extreme heat, they initiate various mechanisms to maintain temperature equilibrium. Sweating and evaporation are crucial for cooling down. Vasodilation, where blood vessels around the body's periphery dilate, allows blood to flow faster, dissipating warmth as it reaches the skin's surface. These responses explain why our skin turns red and why our hearts beat faster in hot conditions. However, the increase in metabolic rate observed in some individuals at higher temperatures remains a mystery. Halsey suspects that there might be other undiscovered physiological functions at play. While increasing metabolic energy costs in response to cold temperatures makes sense, doing the same in response to heat seems counterintuitive. Cardiologist Alberto Cicconi, who advised the Climate Change Research Group of the Spanish Society of Cardiology, believes that the body activates and enters an alert state whenever it faces stressful situations like extreme heat or cold. While the recent study confirms this, it doesn't explain the underlying mechanisms at the cellular level, which would require further research. It's important to note that heat doesn't just affect us physically, it also has social, political, and urban planning implications. Sociologists Cristina Linares and Julio Diaz from the National School of Health in Madrid emphasize the need to understand the effects of heat on our cities and communities. They advocate for adapting cities to cope with rising temperatures, such as creating and maintaining parks, as vegetation provides a simple yet effective solution. In recent years, despite the increasing heat, associated deaths during heat waves have been decreasing, even in countries with traditionally hot climates. Age and socioeconomic status play a role in vulnerability to heat waves, with poverty being a significant risk factor. Adaptation and acclimatization are key factors, and while biological species acclimatize at a certain rate, the rise in temperatures is outpacing this rate. As we face the challenges of global warming, we must take a comprehensive approach, 
considering not only high temperatures but also pollution, forest fires, and other associated risks. Heat advisories and early symptoms of heat-related illnesses should be taken seriously. Staying hydrated, avoiding the sun, and being aware of one's body's response to heat are vital for personal well-being during hot weather. In conclusion, our bodies have intricate mechanisms to regulate temperature in response to extreme heat, but there's still much to uncover about the human body's metabolic responses and adaptation. By understanding these processes and taking holistic approaches, we can better prepare ourselves and our cities for the challenges of rising temperatures. Heat affects us not only physically but also socially and environmentally, making it imperative to address the broader implications of heat stress. With concerted efforts in research, urban planning, and community adaptation, we can mitigate the risks associated with extreme heat and build resilient societies that thrive in a changing climate.